this is a recording reviewing what we did in class on Friday. The class recording Friday had um, exceptionally poor sound, I believe, because the microphone that my external microphone must have been competing with the Zoom microphones. And the result was it's very hard to hear anything. So I'm going to go through the sample quiz problem here that we did in class. We had two student solutions that were both um, great solutions. And then um, we demonstrated them in class. After that, after those two solutions, I'll just do a quick review of the upcoming calendar, which is the other thing we did in class. Um, and then the students had some time to do this problem before we reviewed it and a little bit of time to work comparing homework answers. So um, this problem is um, you're given a segment TD right here as an altitude and you have to construct an equilateral triangle and the student John that did this solution, um, what he, what his solution was, basically if you had a point T here, um, he would use his compass to construct a perpendicular, let me darken that first line, but use a compass to construct a perpendicular through T. And that was his first uh, beginning of his process. And then he marked off this distance T, D up here. And then he made used his compass to do another perpendicular going in this direction. And then he took his compass and figured out um, where to hit this. So in other words, he opened his compass to figure out how far does he have to open his compass to hit this line. And then he used this segment here between T and, um, well, if you look down here, the problem tells you you have to put T and R on this segment. So he figured out where to place I first. And then since T, I, and I, R are the same, he used his compass to swing an arc down here. And he created an equilateral triangle that way. So that's the process we're going to do. I'm going to move down here now and begin that perpendicular construction. First thing I need to do is just extend the line about T here or beyond T so I can create a perpendicular um, with my straight edge. So Make that a little bit thinner. And have that line up with the original line. So now I'm going to put my compass on T and draw a circle about T. Um, and then that's how I begin the perpendicular. So I just draw the circle around T and I'm going to create a perpendicular. I am going to pause to do that just to save viewing time, less for you to watch. So you can see the gray here. That's the perpendicular construction. Now I have to go get the length TD. So I'll zoom out here so you can see more of everything. So that's the altitude TD. So I'm going to open my compass and match that length.
and then mark it off. up here and this is not a point on the triangle but it is establishing the height like we talked about up here um, so it's the height but it it's not actually point D it's just the distance TD now I'm gonna um, move my compass extend this line and make a perpendicular through that point. So again, I'll go to kind of a lighter color here. And we'll repeat that perpendicular construction about here. I'll pause again since that construction's been mastered. Nobody really needs to see all the steps. It'll save some viewing time. So now I have the second perpendicular. And then um, I'm going to take my compass and try to reach. I would reach up. there if I could, but since I can't, I'm going to just create a 60 degree angle since my compass doesn't reach that far. However, if it did, I could just hit the point up there with my compass. I'm going to just create a 60 degree angle since I need an equilateral triangle. and take my straight edge and go through that at a 60 degree angle. Um, I still have a little bit of problem because Normally, I could just expand the compass to reach the bottom, but since I can't, I just have to create another 60 degree angle. And in class, um, I actually shrunk the picture down, but the skill of having to adjust when your compass is too small is also a useful skill. So I'm just creating the 60 degree angle because my compass is too small to reach. And that's a good problem solving skill. So now I go through here and I have my equilateral triangle. So I'm going to pause this for just a minute. Okay, so now I have T, and then I'm going to label this I, and then R. The second method we'll do same idea. I just clean the slate here. This idea was um, Sam's idea in class. He extended well, he actually started at point T and because um, an equilateral triangle is symmetrical, he knew the altitude was also the angle bisector. So he created an angle bisector here. Copy, he just made like a 60 degree angle and then he created the angle bisector. And then he put that in 
So again, this is just the idea of sketching your thoughts out. And once he did that, he marked off point D. And from there, he created a perpendicular about D. This should be D. Going this way with his compass, he created a perpendicular. And he extended that until he hit the segment below until the and this segment with his angle segment intersected and he had an equilateral triangle. So I did the solution too. I really liked it. It's um, different than John's. And one thing is John's solution is more global. It works all the time. Um, and Sam's solution works for this problem because of the property of altitudes in an equilateral triangle. They're also the same as the angle bisector. So it's a great solution. Um, although it, it doesn't work for every problem, but it works perfectly for this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and create the 60 degree angle here at point T. Just with the same compass setting. And then I'm going to create an angle bisector while I'm at it. So I should have just continued that. And this gives me the angle bisector. So I have two things accomplished here. I have the angle bisector, which is also an altitude going from T. Whoops. And then I have the actual side of the triangle that will be along that segment. So let's get this one here to be a little lighter. It's not part of the triangle. Now we're going to mark off the altitude length. Down here, starting at T. So this is actually point D. Which is not one of the vertices of the triangle. And now I'm going to create the perpendicular around D because the altitude has to be perpendicular to the base. So I, I have to create that circle and I'll pause and create a perpendicular. So I've created the perpendicular here. Now I take a segment and go through the intersection points. And that's my equilateral triangle.
And as you see, um, two different processes, but this is still um, the same equilateral triangle. So it's a unique solution, and that is point I. Okay. Um, the next thing we did was just talk about the calendar. So I'll just bring that up real quick. Next week, we have a quiz on Monday. And That'll be a construction quiz, similar style to what we just did, where you have more problem solving than skill testing. And um, that's this. Also, we'll do a little bit of talk about 3.8, and you'll have a very small homework assignment, plus a bonus assignment. That is, it's a one problem assignment. And then you'll come back Tuesday with questions. We'll go over the quiz, some review. Um, Wednesday, you'll have the nine-point circle test. I'll give you a new triangle and a new set of directions, and you just repeat the nine-point circle. This gives you an opportunity to demonstrate your skills for 20% of your grade. Your homework will be due Wednesday. And then you have a construction test, the second part. It'll count as 80% of your grade, more focused on problem solving and talking about um, unique versus not unique. Um, Friday is our retest day, so you'll have an opportunity in class to either take a chapter one or a chapter two retest or do possibly this assignment, but um, I still have to think about it. There'll, there'll be an assignment in class that you can either do in class or take home. The last thing we talked about in class, besides the solutions to those problems, is talked about uniqueness. And um, for some reason, my my screens are not showing up completely here. Um, but this was problem one on your test, I mean on your homework, on your construction review sheet. And for whatever reason, it is not showing up here. Um, but problem one, I did two different ways. So like all the directions are supposed to be here, but yeah, they're not showing up for some reason. And I think maybe the recording is overwhelming the capacity of the smart board but um, I think we talked about how you could take the same criteria and make two different parallelograms on problem one but on problem two with the the, the rhombus no matter how you did that you could only come up with one rhombus, therefore we would say that was unique. And this one, since there's two different um, parallelograms that have the same diagonal length um, and the same given angle F, I came up with two completely different parallelograms, therefore we would say it's not unique. And that That pretty much covers it, all the things we did.